What we've got all around here is our outdoor historic salvage stuff, which includes mostly masonry related stuff, a lot of historic roof tile, a lot of bricks, and then we've also got all this granite. We call it the boneyard because it's uh, when they need to replace a piece of tile here, sometimes finding matching a historic piece of tile can be really, really difficult. So we keep a big collection of it here. But it's really worth doing because if you don't have the stuff around and you got to go search for it, you might have to go a long way. Just last week we had to bring in some roof tile from a, from a boneyard elsewhere, probably about 30 or 40 miles from here. And ironically, I think this particular yard had material that they got from the Army from here about 30 years ago. So we're going out and having to buy back stuff that they originally got from us. So we probably have at least eight or ten different styles of roof tile here. And over here we have a large collection of brick. Sometimes it's good if you need to do a restoration on something, you have the same kind of brick. So we probably have six or eight different kinds of brick around here as well, so that if they you know, need to patch up something and it needs to look right, we've got the right stuff. One of the best things about my position here as a waste reduction coordinator at the Presidio Trust is that they actually have a position called Waste Reduction Coordinator. I think I might be the only one in the whole federal system. And you know, it gives me a lot of pride to say that our organization has supported this kind of thing. Not only do we run the salvage and the management of the excess material, but we also are in charge of all the waste management, the recycling, refuse management, compost duties. So we're sort of the ones who monitor where stuff goes so that if somebody needs to order a dumpster, well, we're there asking them what goes in that dumpster. And then we look in the dumpster and we go, no, that doesn't go in the dumpster. We've, we're we're going to save that. And it's kind of neat because we really do run the gamut. We have really mundane stuff like office furniture and office supplies, printer cartridges and paper. They can just come up and get a desk from us or whatever they might need. So we have managed to save the trust a lot of money. We've also generated a fair amount of money by selling things at government auction when we've decided that items just aren't ever going to get used. And it fits very well into the trust's sustainability goals. Not only financial sustainability, but also we get to preserve historic material because it really is part of the fabric of the place. Right now we're babysitting a pair of 500-year-old cannons from the Officers Club, which are going to be reinstalled soon. So we kind of keep the circle closed. There's rebar like you'll never see again. This is from uh, when they tore down the lower approach to Doyle Drive. and They don't make it like this no more. Square rebar. Frequently when they have new projects come in here, they'll come to look for architectural elements that they can use in their space, things that they might not have thought of otherwise. The Inn at the Presidio has done a really, really good job of um, incorporating salvage elements. They've not only photographed a lot of items that were up in our salvage realm, but they've also used actual 3D pieces that they've incorporated. and They did a really good creative job of it and we do go to great efforts to make sure that useful things aren't wasted. So when we found out that the Presidio Parkway project was coming through, there was these buildings that had to be demolished, which is usually what happens in the big roadway projects. But these buildings were full of ancient, ancient wood, real dimensional lumber that you just can't really go out and find anywhere. So we decided that we wanted to have them deconstruct these buildings and rather than demolish them. That means literally picking them apart stick by stick, which is a very meticulous process. They did a fantastic job. They went beyond our expectations as far as how much wood they recovered. We wound up generating over 20,000 linear feet of real dimensional wood. One location where we've been able to use some of the old wood where it's exposed and it's turned out very nicely is up at Fort Scott in building 1202. And there they used a bunch of the pieces running through the rafters of the whole attic of this place. It's of a quality that you just don't see anymore when you remill the wood. It just looks beautiful. They've made some benches for some window seats in the stairwells, a whole bunch of different ways they've used it up there. And it's really neat because the wood that they used was kind of from the same era of these buildings, so it's, it fit in very nicely up there. And that looks gorgeous. I mean, I'm very happy that they were able to use it in such a way. And hopefully that will continue down the rest of the buildings up in the Fort Scott project. So I'm hoping they'll use it all. <laughs>